Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Rodin, and in today's video, we are going to be going over the top 20, because I was going to do just 10, and then I got to 15, and I was like, okay, we'll just do 15, and then I got to 16, and I was like, well, might as well go for 20 now, so top 20 best track cars for under $10,000. How was your guys' Sunday? My Sunday was great. How was your guys' Sunday? It was, it, was, it was a good day for me yesterday. How was your guys'? But, but that's, for people wondering, you know, what, what, is, what is a track car? What what is what does that imply? These are just cars that you want to take to your local track. My local track is Lime Rock Race Race Lime Rock Lime Rock Park, um, and so that's where I would take this bad boy. But where would you 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 would take these cars to your track and try and get the the best lap times? These are not cars that are going to be fast in a straight line. These are not cars that are going to be best for drifting. These are not cars that are going to be best for I don't know autocross in particular. These are track cars cars that you take and you and you and you take them around the laps maybe you could turn them into a time attack car but something that grips that takes corners well that has decent brakes that most of them are going to be pretty lightweight you guys got get the idea these are the best track cars the top 20 best track cars for less than ten thousand dollars and realistically most of these are under 5k but i had to say 10k because some of them are close to that 10k threshold but without further ado let's right into it with number 20 and number 20 is one of the most iconic track cars in the world just an absolute monster the bmw 325i e30 the e30 m3 in particular was an absolute homologation hero like we all know the history about those cars they're incredible but the base models are still really good options the 325i comes with a 2.5 liter in line six making 170 horsepowers in their rear wheel drive one thing you're going to notice on this list is a lot of these cars are pretty low horsepower um but in reward for that they're also pretty lightweight and that's exactly how it is with the e30 you want if you want a track car i mean you can go for obviously you know an m4 and you get tons of horsepower i mean obviously that's, that's the best but if for under 10k most of the cars with high horsepower are cars that are really heavy you know and they're not good track cars things like fourth gen camaros or fox body mustangs i guess the fox body could be good but yeah things like that are just not the best the e30 the e30 is not that though Number 19. This is like one of the highest horsepower cars on this list, actually, so that should show you what I mean by that. It's the Nissan 300ZX Z32. These cars are slightly heavier than like the average on this list, but still very, very lightweight, very good track oriented performance mobiles. They come with a 3 liter V6, making 222 horsepower in their rear wheel drive. Are these cars like the best option for people that are like a first time car owner? Absolutely not. We all understand the history of the 300ZX, right? You, it's hard to work on them. They're not the most reliable cars out there. The interior is kind of small, whatever. We get the idea behind that for like a, a new time car buyer. But if you are just buying a track car, if you know it's going to be like a project track build, then a 300ZX is a great option, partner. A great option. People underestimate these Z cars because they're rear wheel drive and they have a lot of horsepower and they're, they are slightly heavier than, you know, the competition. And so they only, people always buy them and turn them into drift cars. But you don't have to do that. They were built to be track cars. They handle pretty well. 18th place is just an obvious one uh if you if you have watched any youtube video on planet earth of like a track day then you've seen these cars the volvo 740 they're the volvo 740 the volvo 240 the volvo s60 there's all kinds of volvos out there that you could buy and you could have a ton of a, a, a huge amount of fun at a track with but i went with the 740 for today it comes with a 2.3 liter inline four making 114 horsepower in its rear wheel drive I love that about Volvos. They're so unassuming. Like if you brought a Volvo 740 to a non-car guy, right? Just your random Joe Schmo down the road and you were like, hey man, did you know that this is actually a pretty good option if you want to like start racing? And he would probably think you're an idiot. He would probably slap you upside the head and steal your lunch money. But there, but he would be wrong because you're not an idiot. You're smart. These are great options for a, for a new times buyer. And the reason why is because they're so goddamn cheap and they're so reliable too. 17th position is going to a much more like obvious choice the porsche boxster 986 now i get it okay we all don't like the porsche boxster they're a little wonky looking okay they don't they, they they're, they're they're convertible versions of the cayman which the cayman is already kind of uh, i love the cayman personally but the cayman is already kind of a car that like you know you don't really think of when you think of Porsche race cars, okay? But the Boxster comes with a 2.7 liter flat six, making 245 horsepower going to the rear wheels. That's a decent horsepower number, and it's still a Porsche. It still has Porsche-like suspension, okay? It still has Porsche brakes. Like, it still handles like a Porsche is going to handle. It's just slightly underpowered. And yes, it is a convertible, so the aerodynamics aren't as good as something like a 911 or the Cayman, obviously. But it's still a, a, a freaking Porsche, man. 16th place is going to the wonderful Honda Civic EF. 
Why did I choose the EF? I don't know. I felt like choosing the EF today. I feel like we don't talk about this car enough on this channel. We always talk about the freaking EGs, the 6th gens, the 7th gens. Never talk about the EF, so I chose the EF today. Comes with a 1.5 liter in line 4, making 70 horsepower in its front wheel drive. Obviously, this is one of the ones that would need a little bit of work in order before it becomes like an actual fun track car. Bone stock, this is not going to be fun for you. 70 horsepower is very low. But everything about Hondas, if you know, you know, is super cheap. You can put a B-Series in this car and immediately double the horsepower up to 140 if you want to. It's 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 so easy to build these things. And yes, the, obviously, the EG is a better option. Obviously, the 6th Gen SI, 7th Gen, 8th Gen SI, they're all better options. But again, I wanted to talk about the EF, but realistically, any Civic. Any Civic under 10K is probably going to be a good track car option for you. 15th place is going to one of those cars that you definitely don't think about when you think of a track build, but they are really good for it. The Ford Focus ST. That's not like, like whenever I think of Ford Focus, I think of like rally racing because that's kind of where they, that's kind of where they, they st they're stopping grounds, right? Same with the Ford Fiesta, uh, which by the way, I was going to include the Fiesta in this list instead of the Focus, but I live in America and I feel like the Focus is just a much more popular option here. Uh, the car comes with a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four, making 252 horsepower in its front wheel drive. That's a very high number for this list. Um, but it, it it just works. This car is definitely not as light as some of the other cars. Uh, it's that, but oh, what was that? The spider just freaking landed on my arm and scared the crap out of me. But yeah, it's not as light as the other cars. It's not as uh, it's not as like autocross spec as the other cars. But if you have a longer racetrack, you know, with some straights on it, then this is a better option for you than those because it has more power. 14th position is coming to the like pretty much the new Miata. People are calling it that, and I will 100% back them up on that. The Subaru BRZ first generation because there's two of them now. The reason why the car is so low, even though it's honestly one of the best ones on this list, is they are still kind of hard to find under 10k and chances are if you are finding one under 10k it's going to be a rebuilt title if it is a clean title it's going to have a lot of miles the car comes with a two liter flat four making 200 horsepower on the dot and their rear wheel drive this is going to be like one, like the s13 in of our time in like 20 years from now the kids are going to be wanting to buy one of these things and they're going to be stupidly overpriced because everybody buys them everybody modifies them and everybody beats them up but for good reason they're fun they're fun little they're literally like the new miata they're so light 200 horsepower people make fun of it for being like slow but dude it's not even that bad 200 horsepower is really not that bad for a new car sure but like for what they are for what they represent they're not that bad man 200 horsepower is gonna be it's gonna be a fun little autocross monster 13th place is one that I feel like people always forget about when they think of like a track car, the Nissan 240SX S14. Um, the S13 is definitely cheaper, easier to find under 10K. The S14 is going to be a little bit of a, a trouble to find under 10K, but I always talk about the S13, so I decided to go S14 today. Uh, the car comes with a 2.4 liter inline four, making 145 horsepower in a rear wheel drive. Now, everybody knows about the 240SX. Everybody wants a 240SX, right? But they always want them for drifting. These cars are good little you know track cars they're not like people it's just like the z that we were talking about earlier people always get this idea in their head that when they buy a certain car they have to build it the way that everybody else does but it's not the case you can 240 sxs are great track cars they're also pretty decent for like drag racing surprisingly like if you obviously if you swap the motor ka is not going to be great for that but like these are just a good platform in general it doesn't have to be a drift car it can be a track car and it'll handle it greatly Coming in at the number 12 spot is a car that I fell in love with the moment I found out about it, the Audi S4 B5. I'm going to have to start, I'm, I just realized that this is a 20 car list and so I can't do my normal like minute long recordings of these cars, so I'm going to start ramping through these bad boys. The S4 B5 comes with a 2.7 liter twin turbocharged V6, making 250 horsepower and it's all wheel drive. These things are just so gorgeous. Even if they weren't good track cars, I would put it on this list just because I love them that much. But they are. They are such good track cars. They're so light for 250 horsepower. The co motors are incredibly unreliable, but who cares? You are you just need a track car, baby. And they're good for making some power. They're just they're just all around a good platform. Now people, you know, tend to build the S4s for more like street racing, drag racing things because they are just so gosh diddly darn good in a straight line. But they are, again, also good cars for track racing. Coming in at the number 11 spot is a car that was just built for track. It was just like they did not care about anything except for how good this thing can handle. It's the Mazda RX-7 FB. I usually talk about the FC in my videos, but I wanted to change it up today. So we're going with the FB partner. The FC is realistically the better option, though. It just just one for the pretty much they're pretty much cost the same price nowadays. And so why not? But either way, the car comes with a 1.1 liter two rotor 
rotary engine, making only 100 horsepower, which is definitely not that high, but it's also rear wheel drive and incredibly lightweight. These things weigh like two pounds. You could you could use these as a, you could bench press these things to get a nice pump in. They're freaking insane. Also on top of that, they're just, the motor is not good for building power or anything like that. I want to make that clear, but they are good for swaps. People put LSs in them, people put K-series in them, and they all, they handle it really well. My dogs are barking, so I got to stop recording now. Okay. Now I, I have been just, I have been bombarded for these past like 10 minutes trying to record this video. So 10th place is a Dodge Neon SRT4. Um, honestly, even the regular Neon, like the SXTs, those are also really good. They're really good autocross cars. Either way, the SRT4 comes with a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four, making 230 horses and their front wheel drive. Now, unfortunately, these cars have been kind of, you know, kind of been uh, eaten up in terms of the tuner world so they, there's it's kind of hard to find these things stock but who really cares i mean buy one that's already kind of modified and now you have now you have a head start and you get to deal with all the other the old owners previous mistakes and you get to try and fix all those too it's a lot of fun either way though the srt4 the neon just platform in general again like i said earlier with the sxt2 has always just been a good like autocross platform uh the srt4 has more power so it's going to be slightly better for like actual circuit racing um but either way just a good just a good option Ninth place is the cars that were just literally built for uh, uh, track racing out of the gate. The Volkswagen GTI. Today, we're going to talk about the Mark V. I usually talk about the Mark IV, Mark VI, and I always forget about the little middle child there, the Mark V. She, what, what's she doing? You know, what's she, what's she doing today? Well, we're going to tell you what she's doing. She's racing on a racetrack. Car comes with a two-liter turbocharged inline four, making 210 horsepower, and it's front-wheel drive. Again, it's another front-wheel drive hatchback, just like the Focus ST. The GTI has just incredible aftermarket support. People modify these things all the time to be a good little race cars if you want you could go with quite literally any gti because they're like all under 10k somehow any generation of them and so and they're all going to be a good option but i just chose the mark 5 today it's a fun option it's different i don't like to, i don't talk about it all, enough but yeah it's a gti i mean do i need to say anything else they're they're, they're track they're track beasts Ace place is a daunting one. This bad boy is like an Elden Ring boss, partner. It's a Toyota MR2 SW20. What does he mean by it's an Elden Ring boss? Well, it's 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 one of those cars that takes a little time to get used to it. Uh, takes a little time to get the handling down. But once you do, oh my gosh, you're rewarded with it. Now, the car comes with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 135 horsepower in its rear wheel drive. It's, again, another car that's low horsepower. I get it, but the car is light. The thing handles like an absolute dream. The AW11, honestly, I should have done the MRS as well. All MR platforms, MR2, SW20, MR2, AW11, and then the MRS, Spider, MR Spider, whatever they call it, MR2 Spider, all of them are good options for if you just want to go on the track. Again, they do have that mid-engine snap over steer, hum, 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 mumbo jumbo, mumbo jumbo, that's the word I was looking for. And so you do have to take some time to get used to driving one of these things. But once you do, you will be rewarded. Seventh place is another one kind of like the... Uh, Boxster that we were talking about earlier because it's another Porsche, but that people always think are just is just like not as good as a 911 just because it's not a 911. It's the Porsche 944. The 944, yes, it doesn't have as good the highest horsepower as a 911. It's not as good at at, at racing as a 911 or something like that. But it's lighter than a 911. The car comes also with 2.5 liter inline four, making 147 horsepower in its rear wheel drive. Is that horsepower number impressive? Not for a Porsche. You know, I'm not going to be the one to go out there and be like, wow, this is a great horsepower. Blah, 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 blah. But it's again, it's an, it, it feels a different role than something like the 911s or the Caymans or something like that. It's a lighter, just, just big, a cornering monster partner. Okay. Don't pop up the headlights. So if you want to get good lap times, cause that's just, that is just drag coefficiency down minus six place. Is another one of those cars that we were talking about with the s14 and with the 300zx where it's like everybody always thinks that they have to build it this certain way uh and they have to drift it but you don't it's the nissan 350z yes i get it everybody that buys a 350z drifts them you know they turn them into little drift cars because they have a limited slip diff from factory almost 300 horsepower and they're very heavy you know 3800 pounds is definitely not light but they're good track cars. They come with a 3.5 liter V6, making 306 horsepower in their rear wheel drive. That's the second highest horsepower number on this list, but it's also the second heaviest car on this list. It's a very heavy car. It definitely will struggle a little bit in the corners compared to some of these other cars on the list, but it's still a really good, just, it's just a good car in general for under the price range that they are. It really is. Fifth place is my car that I have now, but just better in every single way. The Acura Integra GSR. The GSR is obviously overpriced now compared to what it was. It used to, you could find a GSR before for like less than 3K, and now unfortunately they're over 5K, but they are still under the 10K mark. So we're gonna talk about this over the LS, and they come with a 1.8 liter inline four, making 170 horsepower in their front wheel drive. Is it 
much better than just an LS. No, if you're on a budget, just get the LS. It's, it, you, you'll have 30 horsepower less to start. You'll have slightly worse brakes, I believe. And then uh, the motor is definitely not as good for making power as in the GSR. But it's still, the GSR is just... Ooh, it's just such a good handling. It's it's a Honda. It's an Integra. These things were the when they came out, well the G, the Type R's at least were the fastest front wheel drive cars out there, and it doesn't take much to turn a G, GSR into the same as a Type R. Fourth position is one of those cars that people know that are just good track cars, but they don't turn them into track cars, and it makes me angry because again they buy them and then drift them. The BMW 330Ci E46. Pretty much any three series BMW is just automatically turned into a drift car nowadays, and that makes me so upset because they're such good handling little cars. This one comes with a three liter inline six, making 225 horsepower, and they are rear wheel drive. Again, it's an E46, man, is the rear subframe going to blow up on you when you take a corner? Maybe. But besides that, it's a great track car, dude. These things absolutely just grip and rip. Is it as good as an M3? No. Is it hard to make this car handle like an M3? No, not at all. It's like you put M3 control arms on it, put M3 suspension on it. That's it. You're good. You're all set. You have an M3 pretty much. You just have to put the power up now. And then you have an M3. It's insane. Third place isn't the most obvious one on this list, but it was going to be here somewhere, and I, I couldn't lie to myself. It's the Mazda Miata, but we're going to go with the NB today uh, for a lot of reasons. One, they're actually cheaper than an NA now. It blows me away, but they are. They are actually somehow cheaper. People, this is this should tell you how little people understand about cars. The car comes with a 1.8 liter inline four, making 135 horsepower in their rear wheel drive. If you know Miatas, then you understand that the NB Miata is just better than the NA in almost every single way. It really is. It literally is just it's just a better version of the NA, except for looks. I, I I admit that the NA looks a lot bit cooler than the NB does. I, I get that. But they're somehow cheaper. Take advantage of that while you still can. People are going to start to figure out about the NBs and start to realize that they're just literally just better NAs and are going to start to buy them up any day now. So just pick start picking them up now. They're I don't have to explain how they're good track cars, but they are. They're incredible. Second place is definitely the most controversial choice on this list because I feel like most people don't think of, of track racing when they think of these cars. It's a Chevy Corvette C5. I don't understand why most people don't, though. I get that the whole idea that like, American muscle cars with V8s in them are usually just good for straight line performance. That's usually, they don't usually handle corners that well, but that's not what the VET was made for. The Corvette was the complete opposite of that, where yes, it had the V8, yes, it had the high horsepower, yes, it was kind of heavy, but it also handled corners incredibly. The car comes with a 5.7 liter V8, making 350 horsepower in their rear wheel drive. Are they heavy? I'm not going to lie to you and say that they're going to be as good as like an autocross car as something like the Miata or the E30 on this list? Absolutely not. But if for actual like circuit racing, it's incredible. These things handle surprisingly well for their weight. They're, they're race cars. They weren't meant to be a straight line performance car like something like a Mustang, Challenger, Camaro, Charger, something like that. It was meant to be a good handling car. And it does that really, really well. Honorable mention. Oh, that's right. I couldn't even stop at 20. I had to include this one. This is the BMW 328i E36. Uh, this is so freaking obvious. And that's why I put it as the honorable mention. I had to put it on the list. So I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't neglect it and not put it here. A car comes with a 2.8 liter inline six, making 190 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive. But again, it's so obvious. People know about the E36. They'd use it for everything. Drifting, rally racing, circuit racing, autocross, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, they'll take it there and they'll use it for it. And it's a good option for that. Uh, but everybody already knows about it. So it's just the honorable mention. And we already had two or three series. So I didn't want to put another one on the actual list. But first place, the car I believe is the best for track racing right now for less than $10,000 is going to the Subaru WRX Bug Eye. Why the Bug Eye? Because it's the same thing as the Blob Eye and it's the same thing as the Hawk Eye. But I always talk about the Bug Eye, uh, Blob Eye in my videos. And I personally don't like the Hawk Eye. So we're going to go with the Bug Eye today. The car comes with the same thing as those other two cars. A two liter turbocharged flat four making 225 horsepower and they're all wheel drive. We all know the history behind WRX and their rally standards. They're incredible rally cars. But whenever a car is a good rally car, that typically means it's also going to be a pretty good car on a regular racetrack, okay? And that's exactly how it is with WRXs. They're incredible little race cars. If you take them to a track, they're gonna they're gonna do well. The all-wheel drive system is incredible in them. They're very lightweight. They have a short wheelbase. They have 225 horsepower out of the factory, but you can get easily a lot more out of them. Is the reliability questionable once you start to push up the boost? Absolutely. But again, this is not a video about reliability. It's a video about track cars, and this thing is just absolutely incredible for it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's video of the top 20 plus one honorable mention best track cars cars for less than ten thousand dollars a couple of these cars were definitely just thrown in there because i personally like them but in reality i feel like all these cars are just really good track oriented vehicles okay and a lot of them are cars that i feel like most people don't think of when they think of track racing because 
they again they, they think like the 350z or the s14 they immediately think of dr drifting because it's just so popular to drift those cars now that no one thinks about them as a as a track car anymore but that's stupid because I, I, these cars are really good for track racing and so i i wanted to put those on there as well um and so that's why i was again i was going to just do a top 10 or and maybe even a top 15 but I, I i couldn't exclude some of these options so thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it let me know the videos you want to see das Padania, and have a nice night